what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Attitude. So, I just got out of seeing the movie Abigail. So I'm gonna be completely frank, I'm not a vampire fan. All I could take away from this film's trailer was camp. A goofy, maybe intentionally cringe, but possibly decent campy, R-rated slasher, as well as being the next project from a pretty credible uh, horror studio. And I'm not gonna lie, Melissa Barrera, Catherine Newton, Angus Cloud, Dan Stevens. Yeah, I wasn't completely dreading this one. So let's talk about Abigail. So this film's plot is basically this group of criminals make their way to the home of a very wealthy man, which from what the trailer states is going to be $50 million poor, where the plan that these criminals have at this man's home is to hold his daughter for ransom, only for it to be revealed that this little girl is is actually a fucking vampire. We kidnapped a fucking vampire. <laughs> A ballerina vampire. So let's get right into this. So first off, what I could only describe as extravagant was this film's sound design. The cinematic score here as a ballet themed film, as that like theater musical kind of like atmosphere, to the sound design from this film as a criminal themed film as well. It was everything sound related when it comes to cinema and when it comes to a movie like this. Also, I like the fact that this movie pretty much starts immediately, which I think is fair and I also expect it out of a straightforward can be fun premise like this. I mean, this film's main purpose was to have a solid cast and a solid slasher. Nothing much more, nothing much less. Also, the more I thought about it, the more this film kind of reminded me of the movie Don't Breathe, which was dumbass criminals with a plan revolving money, only for them to get barricaded with this person that the crime relates to, and for them to get their comeuppets. Also, I will say the film does center more at times and when it needs to. On the crime action -y side, it has equally as much fun with that as well as the dark comedy that this cast and the directors of this film, as we all know, are capable of doing. That you could tell it's from the same makers behind Ready or Not, and didn't feel exactly like Don't Breathe, in just that like tense, hold your breath, kind of like cat and mouse way. But this felt more like a Hunt the Hunters sort of thrills based horror film. And again with the directors, cast, genre mixing, like thrills that comes with that. And all the cinematic incorporations of a solid film, you know, score, sound design, stunts, choreography. This film juggled all of that really solidly. Also, very happy to see Angus Cloud again. Gone way too soon, but I'm happy to see him really make potentially his final appearance in such a fun, wild, packed film like this where he easily was my favorite character in the film. I don't know if I'd say all the characters are like realistic or relatable, but as fun and packed as the film is, and how much they incorporate and how much fun that all is, the characters are the same way, and I was easily rooting for Claude the entire time. There's actually a scene early on where he's describing his theories to like each person, and it's funny in that just honest and understandable, but cliche sort of way, but also that self-aware way where these characters really do feel pretty cliche to the T in the sense of like how he's describing them. And going further into the characters, with the film obviously showing signs of solid and impressive, well-handled cinematic aspects, the film also has maybe like you could call it a bit of a surprise as far as like once its story kind of gets going, once you find out like the backgrounds to this girl and where she comes from, where once that re was revealed, I was like, Okay, story and character de development is always important, obviously, but this? Well, this shit's gonna get real, isn't it? Also, Alicia Ware as Abigail was absolutely fantastic. As a child actor that is the main character, more or less, she didn't annoy me the whole time, but also was able to tap into certain emotions and scenes so much so that I think they delivered to me like even grittier than they probably should have. And at times she was so realistic as a young girl that I was kind of rooting for her. Even with me never really hearing of this actress before and going initially hugely to this film because of the solid cast that, you know, is these criminals. She also has some lines in here where like she delivers some really lengthy mouthful like of scenes at once where I thought she was absolutely exceptional. But one thing now that I do want to talk about is that as far as like how it transitions from like this dark comedy crime thriller to this vampire slasher, I think the idea is there. On paper as well as the intentions as far as making these transitions connect, it's solid enough but on screen, just pace and like tone wise, I feel with all of the other things and regardless of how likable those aspects are, it just can't fit perfectly and transition smoothly without being rushed 
and is just what I can describe as just too bad, you know? It's just one of those things that's just a bit unfortunate. Because aside from that being shown, like, as an ending result, pretty much everything else here is as entertaining as it could have been. But like I said earlier, when it is being that, like, crime thriller, and how well it leans into that, when the film is being that vampire slasher, the tension and atmosphere that comes with a horror film like this, you know, like, the setting here being this giant, unfamiliar, dim home, being hunted by a supernatural being, the silence that the scenes and the film has when it centers on someone being potentially hunted, the reveal of the horror coming with this R-rated vampire slasher, that is also just as fun as it possibly could be. And sometimes even exceeds that in terms of tone and atmosphere because of how campy and how comedic the film comes off as leading up to this and how well it delivered on that. And that goes for the gore and practical effects as well. Another thing though is that as the film played out more, it was that thing where I could definitely see where things could have been taken out so that, like, other important things could have benefited more. Like, for example, Abigail being a ballerina, I felt when I was, like, a good bit into the movie, it was that thing where I was like, okay, what did any of this have to do with her being a ballerina and what did her being a ballerina have to do with any of this? Did the vampire girl really have to be a ballerina and it really just overall did feel like that was just a commercial aspect where it was just weird and wacky and campy enough just to add some extra flavor to this character and while like there is definitely even more so some stuff in here like scenes and segments that are ballerina and theater and like dance based they do just feel like a little bit random and just kind of there where still it didn't need to be there they were just kind of there because the film was like oh wait this is a ballerina vampire we have to have ballerina based scenes also although there isn't a massive lineup to these characters like to these criminals there were a few deaths more than not where the build-up was decent but the execution was always quick a bit abrupt and just felt like the least of the movie's worries I also do think that just like as a story in general, going forward and having character reveals like backgrounds and chemistry, it can also feel a bit rushed and just not nearly as solid as it needs to be. It just feels like as far as writing and fitting everything into the film that the movie wanted to with its runtime, which is already nearing two hours, the film just overdid it a little bit. There are also some cringe nothing cliches toward the bigger picture as far as the like why some of these cr criminals are in the situation that I just feel simply could have been written a lot stronger and just come off very cliche. I also sadly called a lot of things before they happened. I predicted a lot of things, which is just based off of me seeing the main trailer and a featurette, which thankfully didn't affect my viewing experience too, too much because the stuff I liked really hit, but that is just like a little heads up to those that did see the trailers. And lastly, the ending here, it feels kind of how I felt about like, the character deaths where it's just a little bit dull, it feels a little bit anticlimactic, it goes on for a while, it's very predictable and feels somewhat like it overstays its welcome with just how repeated certain things are in the ending. It just feels like the film overdid it a bit, where it couldn't fit everything in smoothly as far as writing and transitions, otherwise the film was about as entertaining as it could have been. And overall, I'm still gonna give Abigail a pass. I fucking hate ballet. But yes guys, that is gonna do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of my review of Abigail, as well as your guys' thoughts on the movie for those that have seen it. But with all that being said guys, that is gonna do it for my review, and I will see you guys in the next one.